Lawrence Hive, y'all really still claiming him after that whack 18 second, 18 stroke revenge sex scene? Y'all should be ashamed of yourselves. Hey everyone, it's Sharana from Payer Weights, and today I will be reviewing or kind of doing a recap of the first episode of the season two premiere of Insecure titled Hella Good, but I think it should have been called Sex Hella Wag, but we'll get to that at the end of the video. So Issa really just was, she was just messing with all, all of my head. In the beginning of the episode, it opens up, you thinking like, oh, okay, like, they're gonna reconcile, they're meeting together, and then you realize it's just a daydream. And Issa has, is now basically back on the market. Um, she's living the single lady life, dealing with all the tortures that a single woman has to deal with when it comes to the dating apps, and going on countless dates of seeing people that you'll never see again. And this is the reason why I just don't date anymore, because it's just too depressing. Um, so, we also see um, Molly. Uh, one of the things that I love that they introduced into uh, this season was the fact that Molly decided to take the advice um, from Issa in season one and to actually go to therapy and try to figure out her life, unpack her, her issues or whatever you want to call it. And um, I thought it was pretty great. It's pretty funny. I hope that someday Miley is willing to actually like talk in therapy about her issues instead of just trying to put on the strong face that everything is good in her life. Um, but I have to get on this um, whole pay wage thing. So Miley um, mistakenly gets one of her male coworkers um, check and realizes that he makes more money than she does. But let me tell you if that was me. Let me have seen that paycheck. I would have called Olivia Pope. I would have called Black China's lawyer and then that other lawyer who'd be helping all the Bill Cosby victims. I'd have been like, we doing a press conference right now. We're going to stand at the steps of the building that I work in. And then we're going to talk about this, this wage gap between men and women. And then I would have got my coins. And before that press conference would have been over, Olivia Pope would have been tapping me on my shoulder like it's been handled, okay? So I just want to see how she handles this. I don't know if it's just going to be something crazy where she just loses it on her partners and she ends up leaving or getting fired or starting her own firm. But I'm happy um, about the storyline and to see where that will take her. Um, so I have to get on Lawrence. Okay, so Lawrence still ain't shit. Like he wasn't shit from season one, but he still ain't shit in this episode. And I'm gonna explain to you why I feel the way that I feel about Lawrence, okay? So as you can see, he's still smashing Tasha, his, his rebound sex, basically. And this goes into why I think Lawrence is basically a user. I think that he was freeloading off of Issa towards the end of their relationship. He didn't want to go get a real job. He didn't want to help her. Like she was basically paying all the bills while he just sat on the couch, no haircut, just doing nothing, just doing nothing with his life, freeloading off of Issa. And I feel like he's doing the same thing with Tasha. So he basically uses Tasha. Um, he used her in season one for the emotional support that he wasn't getting from Issa. And also too, so now Tasha, I still don't like you because I still think that Lawrence cheated on you and I don't care what none of y'all say because he made it seem like they was gonna get back together and then he decided to go and smash Tasha. So he cheating, okay? He's cheating. But, so Tasha, you mean to tell me that you let this fool smash you only on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, he don't take you out, you can't go back to his place because he ain't got no damn place. He's sleeping on an air mattress at his friend's and you okay with that? Like, you just gonna let him just use you like that? Like, Lawrence, you know you don't like her. We know it. You know it. Like, hell, she should know it. Like, why, why are you messing with this chick and you know, like, you really don't want to be with her and I don't understand why she can't understand that she's a rebound, but clearly she's catching feelings for him. So, this, like, goes to Lawrence and Issa. So before I get into that whack sex scene, so she got the um, his mail. She had been telling him that he has mail. He needs to come pick it up. He's been dodging her, not coming over. But he gets, she gets the jury summoned. So he's been summoned to for jury duty in court. You know you got to show up for that. So she was excited. And you know what? It was a dumb idea, but it was probably some stuff I would have did. Probably wouldn't have thrown a party, but I definitely would have like planned something, make sure I was looking good, make sure my hair was did, makeup was on fleek, everything. 
And like the party just, it turned into a party from hell, which is pretty funny, especially when the crypt was like crypt walking and she was like, is this choreography? Like the party was hilarious, but Lawrence didn't show up because who was he with? Tasha. He took that hoe out on a date. Actually, she's not a hoe, so I'm not going to call her a hoe. Actually, no, she a hoe because she was still flirting with him when she knew he was in a relationship, so she's still a hoe. So he took that hoe, Tasha, out on a date, okay, and stood her up. So I'm thinking like, okay, well, episode almost over, and then I hear a knock at the door. I'm like, oh, snap, I bet that's Lawrence. And yes, it was that fool Lawrence at the door trying to get his mail. And you know what? I thought Issa was still looking good. She had on some little booty shorts and stuff, so you see like the little butt cheeks and stuff. And then she didn't have, she had that tight shirt on with like no bra. So like you kind of be like, mm-hmm, this is this what you've been missing out on. But okay, she answers the door. He gets his mail. Then this fool gonna say, I got something in the bathroom. So what you got in the bathroom? You ain't got nothing in the bathroom because at the end of season one, you took everything out of the apartment but that Best Buy t-shirt. So if you'd have been like, hey, I gotta go, you know, I left my Best Buy t-shirt, you know, in the closet, you know, I just wanted back something, but no, you gotta go to the bathroom. But she was like, I mean, okay. And then he come back out and I think he about to leave and I'm like, okay, I don't know what that scene was for. But then he comes back in, he kisses her, then they get on the couch, and then they start smashing, and then I'm, I'm looking down at my phone like, ooh, I'm tweeting about how they smash, and then I look up, I'm like, it's over? So then I did what anybody would do. I had to rewind it, time it, count the strokes. So you mean to tell me, this is the first time you didn't see her, and you you supposed to be giving her that revenge dick, like that dick like, this, this, this what you left? This what you wanted to give up? This what you didn't want no more for that dude? Like, you supposed to give it to her make her feel even worse than she did before because the dick was so good. And then 18 seconds? Like, 18 strokes? Dude! Oh, my goodness! I was just like, I was even more hurt for Issa. Like, you've been waiting on him to come, and then that's all that he, that's, You've been waiting for him to come over, see him, and then that's all that he gives you, like 18 seconds? Is this the type of sex that y'all was having in your relationship? Because if that was the case, then I definitely understand why you decided to go smash Daniel. Like, hell, if he was giving me 18 seconds of 18 stroke sex for however many years y'all been together, I would have been done too. I would be like, get out. You don't work. You ain't got no money. And then you can't even you can't even give me no good dick when I come home from work and I'm paying for all of this. No. And then this goes into Lawrence, you nasty, okay? You nasty because you just smashed Tasha. And hell, I don't even know if you guys are using protection or not, because it looked like y'all not using protection. But I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt for this one. But then Issa, you gonna let him smash you raw? Like y'all ain't in a relationship. Like why is he smashing raw? Like that's like basically he just smashed you. Like that's that's still my that's still my vagina. That's that's still mine. That's nasty. And then the audacity to just have that weak sex. Like you, the end of season one sex with Tasha, and then the sex with Tasha in this episode. Like sir, you was using all you use your blood, your sweat, your tears, your soul. You put your soul into that sex session. You you smashed her so good that you couldn't do nothing but go to sleep when you got home. And then that's what you give? That's what you give to Issa? After all these years and her taking care of you, you gave her that whack dick? You should be ashamed of yourself. And anyone from the Lawrence Hive that's still claiming him after this, you should be ashamed of yourselves too. But overall, excellent episode. Excellent start to the season. I'm so excited to see more. Um, as always, my name is Sharonda, and if you like what you saw today, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, and make sure that you share this with your friends, and I will see you next week.